This week's episode of the Art Tactic Podcast is brought to you by Hangman Fine Art Services. With fall officially underway, it's time to start thinking ahead. Art Basel Miami is just a few months away. If you're looking for a trusted logistics partner for the Miami Fairs, look no further than Hangman Fine Art Services. Hangman offers a full-service facility right in Miami, dependable nationwide shuttle options, and a team of skilled experts ready to manage every detail with precision and care. Whether it's packing, shipping, or installation, their commitment to quality and customer service makes them the ultimate partner for your fine art logistics needs. And the good news doesn't stop there. Hangman has just expanded, opening a brand new facility in Brooklyn, New York. This secure, climate-controlled space is perfect for fine art storage, with viewing rooms available later this year. For Miami or New York or wherever, Hangman Fine Art Services has you covered. Reach out today to get started by visiting hangmannyc.com. Thanks for listening to the Art Tactic Podcast. I'm your host, Adam Green. The fall art market season is now in full swing with the whirlwind of art fairs, auctions, and gallery shows taking place all over the world over the next few months, all leading up to Art Basel Miami. As the season kicks off, we wanted to gain insight from one of the major players in the auction world. So in this week's episode of the podcast, we're joined by Amanda Leocano, Deputy CEO of Philips. We discuss how Philips is leveraging technology to innovate and modernize the traditional auction house model. We also get Amanda's take on the current market sentiment, and we explore Philips' position within the highly competitive auction landscape. Hope you enjoy the episode. Thanks so much for listening. Thanks so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, Adam. Absolutely. So I want to cover a range of topics related to the art market today, but let's start with Philip's recent efforts to leverage technology to innovate and attract younger clients, an area where you've played a key role. Could you share more about these initiatives and how they're helping to engage a new generation of collectors? Yeah, absolutely. You know, At Philips, we've really always believed that technology has the power to transform and modernize our industry. And we're really passionate about innovation, and not just for the sake of change, but to truly enhance the collector experience. We've been in business for nearly 230 years, and our longevity really comes down to this one thing, which is anticipation. We have to anticipate market evolutions, new collector needs, shifting expectations. And being able to do this has really allowed us to stay ahead of the curve. Um, we're recognized as the leaders in the fields that we specialize in. You know, we only really focus on modern and contemporary fine art design and luxury. Um, and we use that expertise to create a more seamless technology-driven and transparent auction experience. Right now in the market, there's this intergenerational inflection point happening. The preferences of emerging generations, and we're seeing, you know, particularly Gen X, Millennials, and Gen Z, will define the future of the industry. And we've been really focused on serving these new collectors, and that's been underpinned by our commitment to provide the highest caliber service we can. So this past spring, over 40% of the buyers at Philips were first-time participants, with millennials and Gen Z making up to close to 30% of those bidders and buyers. And we learned from the shifts in collector behavior over the past five years, you know, particularly driven through the pandemic, that we really need to be always on. So um, in response, we've really expanded our online-only auctions and heavily invested in buy-now options. So a perfect example of that um, early on for us was Perpetual, which is our successful watch shop, which has both digital and a bricks-and-mortar offering. Um, And we've also celebrated the one-year anniversary of Drop Shop, which is our disruptive platform that offers limited edition releases of primary market art and objects that we do in direct partnership with artists and collaborators that we really see as shaping contemporary culture today. 
And I think this is the kind of innovation that only Phillips with our scale and focus and deep connections in the art community can really deliver. Um, you know, Drop Shop is also breaking down barriers between primary and secondary markets because we give um, resale royalty commissions to works from drops that are reoffered at Phillips through auction. Um, on that, you know, the drops have featured artists like Emily Mae Smith, Micheline Thomas, the estate of Jean-Michel Basquiat had a drop, uh, and recently um, we dropped with Kine, and both of those um, drops sold out in minutes. And we've seen on the platform buyers from 21 countries with over 50% of them new to Phillips and 40% being millennials and Gen Z. And for me, what I think is perhaps the greatest success of the platform is how many clients who were familiar with our auctions but hadn't yet transacted are now taking the leap through drop shop, um, you know, on their own terms and at their own pace. Building on drop shop, this summer, we recently launched digital e-commerce for our active private sales business. So we extended our curated Philips X uh, exhibitions from the gallery into the digital realm. And by meeting collectors where they are, this has led to a huge surge in both engagement and transactions. I've been following the drop shop releases closely, watching which artists are participating in the types of works you're dropping on the platform. You mentioned breaking down barriers earlier, and of course, Phillips is traditionally a secondary market auction house, but with Drop Shop, you're working directly with artists to sell works on the primary market. Could you share how those conversations have gone with the artists involved, as well as those who may have ultimately decided not to participate? Are artists generally excited about the collaboration, or are some hesitant? And how do you work to break down those barriers when having these discussions with them? You know, I think what um, we always felt that there was a space for this, both for collectors to um, be able to get better access to the to the artists that they were um, really excited to follow, um, you know, where we couldn't meet that demand either through the gallery or the secondary market. Um, and I think increasingly you're seeing that artists are really taking greater agency over their own careers and are um, are able to kind of make those decisions independent of the traditional market framework about the projects they take on, the the um, the work they put out in the world and how they do that. So, you know, we have found um, we have found great open dialogue with artists um, and it's been really collaborative and really a lot of fun and has led to a lot of um, conversations beyond the project, which has also been great for us. So as we enter the fall season and even a few auctions have already taken place, there's been a lot of discussion, both in the press and among galleries, collectors, and even auction house specialists about a possible softening in the market and how things might unfold for the remainder of the year. From Philip's perspective, where do you see the market standing right now as we head into this auction season? Look, there's no doubt that the top end of the market, which is really what gets the most press coverage, is heavily influenced by sentiment. But really, there's this old market adage that really holds true, which is that quality always sells. And these market conditions that aren't driven by volume, but where expertise and market knowledge and trusted relationships matter, are where um, a house like Phillips really excels. You know, we're navigating the current market with real deafness and agility. This past spring, we had market-leading results in both fine art and luxury. So um, Jean-Michel Basquiat's El Mar sold for $46.5 million in our New York evening sale. And that came from an estate we worked with in partnership with the family's fiduciary. And that stood as the top lot at any house in any location this year. And we matched that success with another Basquiat in Hong Kong. In Geneva, our jewels category had the highest lot of the season across all categories in Geneva. So, you know, we were really proud of how we kind of we met these market conditions and 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 navigated them. Beyond the headlines, though, the middle market is where we see the 
quote unquote, real activity. And that has shown resilience. Over 40% of the buyers this spring were new to Phillips. And with an average of four registrants per lot, more than 85% of the lots offered sold within or above estimate. And those are pretty resilient um, results. I think the metrics speak volumes about the trust collectors placed in us and our ability to deliver results, even in these complex market environments. I think they also show that our focus on quality over quantity continues to resonate with collectors worldwide. And we have the agility to provide more competitive deal terms than our rivals, which ensures that we secure those top tier pieces collectors are looking for. You brought up an important point about how in a softer market like we're seeing today, quality becomes even more critical. Collectors, I think, are becoming more discerning, not just in terms of which artists they pursue, but also in selecting the best examples by those artists. And I think we're seeing this reflected in auction results really across the board. I'd also like to touch on another factor that could be contributing to lower prices, especially at auction. In recent years, Chinese collectors it seems have been key drivers in boosting prices at auction, especially for speculative emerging artists. However, there's been talk of decreased buying from Chinese collectors recently due to economic and perhaps even political pressures in China. Are you seeing this shift reflected in your auctions? And if so, how are you addressing it with your clients? You know, I think the role of Asia in the global art market and its long-term Um, role really can't be overstated. And, um, you know, this is something we identified early on in, um, in, in our kind of strategic outlook. And we've been expanding our presence in the region for nearly a decade. And the strategy has really paid off. You know, I think an upside of having a clearly focused mandate and vision is that we can really decisively move when we see an opportun- opportunity that we believe has long-term structural implications for the market. And so we were the first auction house to open the landmark exhibition space in the region. Um, we opened last year, both in West Kowloon and uh, our watches um, team are in the Petter building. Um, you know, Art Basel and UBS Global Art Market put out a report earlier this year, and their research shows that China is now the world's second largest art market, and it it accounts for 19% of global market share. And half of Asia's population is made up of millennials and Gen Z. So there's no doubt in, in our mind that there is a robust future for the art market in Asia. And we really feel that we're perfectly positioned to capture that growing purchasing power. And I think our focus on engaging younger collectors has already shown remarkable success in the region. Nearly 50% of the bidders and buyers in our Hong Kong auctions are under 43 years old. And this demographic is shaping that future. And I think we're really excited that we're at the forefront of that shift and can really be responding to it in real time. But beyond that, you know, the art market in Asia is complex, it's evolving, and it's made up of both established markets like Japan, South Korea, and greater China, which are evolving alongside these emerging economies with newly developed um, art markets, and they each have their own distinct culture and strengths. And so when we talk about, um, you know, I think when we're, we're talking about the, the, the relative strength or weakness of the Asian market, it's really more complex than, than a lot of the you know, economic news just coming out of mainland China. While the fall auction season is already underway, there's still time for potential consigners to reach out if they're considering selling art this year. Naturally, the auction house space is highly competitive with Phillips and Christie's and Sotheby's all vying for consignments. When you're speaking with prospective consigners, How do you make a compelling case for choosing Phillips over one of your competitors? I mean, from time to time, collectors or even clients of mine ask me where they should consign an artwork, and I find it's rarely a clear-cut decision. There are so many variables to consider, and often at the end of the day, no one knows for certain what the best move is. But in your conversations with potential consigners, are there a few key points you highlight as reasons why Phillips might be the better choice? For us, our position in the industry really boils down to this one essential, which is focus. 
And here at Phillips, we're distinguished for this focus in three areas. So one is modern and contemporary art, luxury, and design. So it's the categories that we feel are driving today's market and culture, the artists, the markets, the institutions, the influences. The second is expert leadership in those categories. So we really focus on attracting the best talent to steward these fields with unrivaled knowledge, both of the art canon and the commercial market. And the third is the focus on the collector. We prioritize understanding and exceeding the client's individual needs and expectations, both in terms of what they are looking to acquire for their collection, but also when it's time to, to sell how that process is going to go. And this laser focus allows us to create curated sales that surprise and excite and, and deliver results that meet and exceed these expectations. And it's why Phillips has a, a reputation for making markets and why collectors know there's always something unexpected in our sales worth looking at. Um, a great recent example was actually not in the auction realm, but was our new terrains exhibition, which we held earlier this year, which was the most comprehensive survey of contemporary Native American art ever held by an institution. And it showed, you know, it really brought greater visibility to these artists on a global stage. And it saw institutions actually purchasing works for um, for their collections. So it really just underscored the growing recognition of diverse artistic contributions in the canon. Following that exhibition, we partnered with one of the artists in the show, Kent Monkman, for a highly successful project on Drop Shop. And then we saw stellar results for a work by Emmy Whitehorse in the New York Day Sale, which sold to a private European collector for, ne for nearly 15 times the low estimate. You know, I think the reality is our position is distinct. We believe in playing the long game. You know, we want to be betting on the trends that will shape the next 10, 20, or even 50 years. And we believe that our focus on expertise, the art, and the collector will continue to drive that forward. I also wanted to ask you about the other side of the equation, the perspective of potential buyers. With primary market prices steadily rising over the past four years, it seems that more collectors, especially newer ones who are used to buying from galleries, are now looking at auctions as a possible avenue for opportunities. How would you pitch the advantages of buying at auction to these collectors, and what kinds of opportunities can they find there? You know, it's in, it's interesting you mentioned that, because I think traditionally when um, – when we talk about reach in an auction house, we're always talking about geographic reach. But I think uh, especially in the modern and contemporary fields, when we talk about reach, it's really across silos. And there are cl uh, collectors who uh, are very committed to a, a auction and you have other collectors who only buy primary. And what we're beginning to start to see is this... Um, you know, especially here at, at, at Phillips, because we're doing more in that primary space with with um, uh, platforms like Drop Shop and, and Phillips X, is that this these silos are starting to disintegrate. So for collectors who may not be familiar with auction houses, the benefits go far beyond the excitement of the sale event. You know, auctions are really a pulse check on the market. They're revealing real-time demand, price points, and trends, uh, you know, through information that everyone can access. Um, so our specialists are not only putting together sales of what is currently driving the market, but they're also looking to anticipate what's coming next. So with that expert leadership and focus that we have, we have a reputation um, for predicting these market trends. And this is often touted uh, for Phillips in the, the market debuts we offer. Um, but collectors also recognize the finer nuances of these uh, of our sale compositions. So, for instance, we were um, the first house to place many more works by women artists in evening sales, with some of those chaos really coming around parody. And you only need to look at representation and in institutional collections to see how significant that is. 
Um, and, you know, these aren't new artists. These are this is really a deliberate push to offer uh, a more inclusive view of the canon. Um, but beyond the, the transaction opportunities, we're providing free access through specialists to market insights, research on the pieces we offer, advisory and appraisal services. Um, and every piece that we offer undergoes rigorous research, authentication and valuation, um, ensuring that buyers can make informed decisions. And I think that's really um, that's really reassuring for new collectors Um because I think that the the information available to you to be able to make an informed decision can feel very fragmented and um, and cloistered. And what you're really trying, you know, what we're really trying to uh, always move to is greater transparency. So you know, the specialists are there to offer tailored advice, and they're helping both their seasoned collectors that they know for for decades as well as these newcomers who are trying to navigate the auction landscape with confidence. As we mentioned, the fall season is already underway, but it would be great if you could highlight some of the standout sales or notable events Phillips has coming up this auction season. Sure. You know, the full the fall season has kicked off in earnest over the last couple of weeks, and we've already seen really strong offerings and results for our edition sales in London and our season opener uh, modern and contemporary sale new now in New York. Our marquee season um, for us kicks off in London in two weeks, where we have a great cross section of works across our evening and day sales. Um, You know, Household names like Kusama and Hockney and Warhol are in dialogue in the same sale with new artists who are driving interest today, like Francesca Millet, uh, Yearwood Dan, and Megan Rooney. Um, the offerings by our industry-leading watches team, led by Arel Box, are well known to be unbeatable. Um, and this season is uh, no different. They're bringing a, to market a theme auction, Toki, which focuses on Japanese watch collecting, as well as a dedicated sale focused on pieces from the 80s and 90s. In December, our design team is looking forward to continuing to build on last year's successful ceramic sale with another dar- dedicated auction. But as you said, we are in full swing with consignment getting across all categories, and the teams are really actually uh, quite excited by what they're seeing and bringing um, to market this fall. What I think is important to to note about whether it's the fall auctions or, or any season here at Phillips is that what you will always see is uh, material that is relevant, that is of a high quality, and that appeals to the broadest collector base active in the market today. We're really serving that real collector market in real time. So from the top lots of marquee evening sales to working with trade partners to help serve their clients, we are focused always on bringing the best quality art and service and results. Amanda, thanks so much again for coming onto the podcast and sharing your valuable perspective on a variety of art market topics. If our listeners want to follow more closely what Phillips has coming up this season, what's the best way to stay updated? Come see us on phillips.com uh, on Instagram or come to any of the galleries and see the, uh, the art in real, in real life. Uh, New York, Hong Kong, Geneva, um, We are there as well as a a variety of office locations across the globe. Perfect. Thanks again, Amanda. Thanks so much, Adam. This week's episode of the Art Tactic Podcast is brought to you by Hangman Fine Art Services. With fall officially underway, it's time to start thinking ahead. Art Basel Miami is just a few months away. If you're looking for a trusted logistics partner for the Miami Fairs, look no further than Hangman Fine Art Services. Hangman offers a full-service facility right in Miami, dependable nationwide shuttle options, and a team of skilled experts ready to manage every detail with precision and care. Whether it's packing, shipping, or installation, their commitment to quality and customer service makes them the ultimate partner for your fine art logistics needs. And the good news doesn't stop there. Hangman has just expanded, opening a brand new facility in Brooklyn, New York. This secure, climate-controlled space is perfect for fine art storage, with viewing rooms available later this year. 
for Miami or New York or wherever Hangman Fine Art Services has you covered. Reach out today to get started by visiting hangmannyc.com.